Okay, my name's Tony Craig, yes, and uh, I, uh, I'm a sculptor, and I live, uh, I live here in Bogota, and I've lived here for a long time. I was born in uh, Liverpool, 1949, and uh, studied in England in uh, different art schools, and I've ended up here. The importance of my generation uh, is... Uh, not possible, probably not possible for me to even judge. I mean, I, I come from a, a very specific generation. I mean, I'm, I'm, as I said, I was born in 1949. There's a huge generation in front of me that after the Second World War, the bulge, if you like, after the Second World War, very quickly took over almost all areas of society, industry, whatever, and at relatively young age, partly because of the lack of, of men, of people, of women, in that and that time, and so I think that um, uh, I've always following this huge generation sort of wave in front of me. So part of my life, I've, I've had some sense of reacting to what they did. You know, I mean, I I was a as a student, I, I was very impressed by conceptual art, by minimalism and things like that. And I, now, I mean, I really am not interested in millions. It's very, very important for me to have been engaged in that, to know that that's really not what I want to do. But, um, um, you know, the idea of people living in, uh, making these very simple industrial forms, living in skyscrapers and dropping bombs on people in bamboo houses in the early 70s was, was just made me realize I wanted to make something entirely different. I wanted to start on another material level. And so th this was a very important, uh, so maybe that's my generation. But that, when I look around, I don't see my generation. You know, people I know from many years, artists like uh, Richard Deacon, I know Richard Long, who belongs to an early generation, and Bill Woodrow. And, and after that, then of course I've known the generations that come after me due to the fact that they were students, so, so partly anyway. I think sculpture is not exactly easy to make. Uh, it's um, I don't really think about challenges. I mean, I think maybe I mean I've had cha I mean when I I don't know if you call it a challenge, but when I, there have been times when I've got myself in a kind of crisis situation and I felt I have to work myself out of it. You know, one of them was indeed in the 80s where I already started to exhibit in the early 80s where I had the opportunity to make a lot of exhibitions and it was only in the course of that tiredness and installations and traveling around and doing exhibitions almost in a, a installative way almost performative way that I realized I really didn't want to do that that it, I had to get back into the studio and, and follow the things that I'm really interested in. And I suppose that was a challenging time, yeah. And there are, there are always challenges, I mean, without a doubt, but I don't know. I was fortunate being in Britain and uh, had the opportunity of going to art school. And uh, I had a very, initially a very, yeah, one could say even academic um, uh, education of how to draw and paint and uh, things like that. And, but I, in the, in, when it came to making my own work, I was left very, uh, very liberally to do what I wanted to do. And, I, and, I, in, and in the 70s, I was allowed for several years as a student to just make what I wanted to make. And I think that was a fantastic thing. In general, I think uh, there's the idea of academia. I mean, the idea of, you know, in the beginning of the 19th century, uh, in the time of Romanticism, there was, in fact, when you look at painting, fantastic things in painting, literature, and music. And sculpture didn't develop very much at that time because the sculptors relied on, of that time, they relied on commissions. You know, sculpture is a little bit more complicated than the other things because they need, we need material and space and energy and labor, whatever, uh, tools to do the work. And in the uh, 19th century, all of sculpture was really still anatomical and, uh, and precise and limited to few materials that were, could be used by craftsmen, you know, they could use in a very precise way. 
And, uh, th and this slowed the development of sculpture incredibly. So while all the other disciplines were expanding, sculpture was actually really not, not it's interesting, but not, it didn't make the same progress as, as other disciplines. Did. And uh, I think that, um, but that changed very slowly through the 19th century because of the work of Mayol, uh, Madada Rosso, uh, and often, by, often uh, uh, Rodin, and into the 20th century, then an explosion of things with Brancusi, Tatlin, Duchamp, and then all of the things we now know in the 20th century, different ways of making art. The academies of today, ironically, are not the academic, you know, it's not what was asked is academic, the negative, the derogative term of being academic, which comes out of the 19th century, hardly applies to the academies in the 20th century, because in the 20th century, nobody really told you what to, tells you what to do. They just give you the space and the opportunity and interesting conversations and, uh, and maybe occupy oneself with a certain kind of content or so on. and if you need help to make things and they also had there was advice about technical matters but as I think it's I mean and especially in Germany Germany has a fantastic group of uh, in Britain we have an art school system and in Germany they have uh, spread around in different locations very good uh, uh, art academies Kunst Academy that um, give give young artists a really good opportunity to test themselves and see their possibilities, find their possibilities. Difficult to explain really, but I mean in Germany, I think it's because there's been a, it's, it's a very cultured country. I mean, they're very interested in contemporary art. Uh, it's always played a role for several hundred years. It's been very, very central to their uh, lives. And I think in Germany in particular that contemporary art, living art as we know it, after the Second World War was very important because it was very, it gave the iconography of the past, obviously it failed them, and uh, people will, are looking for, were looking for uh, new images and new iconography. iconography. And uh, when I first came to Germany in 1977, I was really impressed, or the middle of the 70s when I first came here, came to live here in 77, I was really impressed by the fact that people were so uh, queues in front of the museums and many, uh, many museums and uh, uh, so in Britain it's slightly different. In Britain uh, there have always been uh, painters, I mean, there's a good tradition for painting I think in some ways, um, maybe not to the extent that there were in, in Germany, but um, and I'm, I'm not sure it's a good answer, but I mean, I just say, because there's a kind of, um, a kind of basic philosophy of the British is based since several hundred years on, a, on an uh, sort of empirical way of thinking. So, I mean, it starts with Bar Barclay, the philosopher Barclay, Hobbes, Hume, all, the, Locke, all of these people were very, very clear. The, the idea of very objectively looking at things, reacting to things, taking consequences, and always acting on that which you actually experience. So, um, and I think sculpture is a little bit like that. You know, I mean, you could say attribute even the fact that the uh, Industrial Revolution started in Britain. It probably had to do with that that philosophic tradition. And I don't know if it's stretching it too far to then say that. That's possibly a reason why, in Britain, uh, it does suit somehow the way we think, because it's about looking, doing something, looking at it, learning from that, being consequential about what you've got in front of you, and making the next step. So it's, and it has a practical effect in, in the real world. So, I mean, that's possibly... But there are great sculptors from so many other countries. I'm not particularly nationalistic, so I don't really think about uh, national issues with regard to sculpture. I mean, I obviously see and I appreciate the reception of the work. Um, but, you know, this is my... You're in my studio. This is where I have my ideas. This is where I have my experiences of making things. And I have certain 
themes and certain ideas that I have developed for 45 years. And um, those things, strange enough, <laughs> they, in, their, in their essence, they don't change. I mean, I have different realizations about them. But for the main part, I am pursuing a certain chain of events. And that chain of events, the next step, resolves out of what I'm doing here. So what happens in any other scale outside of the studio is firstly very difficult for me to even grasp it. But on the other hand, uh, it doesn't play any role in the situation here. We started 10 years ago, or a little bit longer before we actually could open it up, but uh, that's, that's not just, that's a, a subsidiary activity. It's partly my work, but we've done, I think, I think 40, 35 exhibitions of other sculptors. I'm interested in sculpture. You know, I'm I, I, not just mine. I mean, my, primarily mine, but I'm actually interested in sculpture as a as a discipline. And I, I'm very interested to see uh, what other art, what other sculptors do, and what they've done, and uh, um, regard it in a way as a privilege to actually uh, see through their work, see the world through the eyes of another of another person in a way. So that's. Why, why we do the sculpture part. I think that's maybe something that's, uh, I, that I appreciate in my life, is that I went, I went to art school in 1969 at a time that nobody went to art school uh, unless they really had their own private reason to do it. And it was, and you had to be, and there was a sense of idealism about that. And, uh, and there were, through the 60s and into the 70s, I think that was still very much the case, that things, the art school, the art world was also very small at that time. So you'd never expect you to be a successful artist or earn some money or even get a teaching job. I mean, you just, you just wanted to do it for reasons of one's own. And so um, that, that is really how I started and uh, that things have changed over the time. I mean, that's been obviously, uh, well, my generation have profited greatly from that, fa that fact, but, um, and I think maybe when I see students and I see younger artists, I think I'm glad that my life ran the way it did. And I'm, I think it much, it's much more difficult for younger artists to work now, uh, not because of the material lack or, or, or of support or anything like that, just because they seem to be obsessed with success, you know, and, and, and they look at the art world for their content. And I believe that's not the best place to look. I mean, I, you can look out into landscape or uh, into human relationships or into complicated numbers or the stars, whatever you want to do uh, to find content for art. But I think looking at the art world is the worst place to be to find um, a content for, for the work. If you're making a drawing or you're modeling something, then, I mean, joining up two points on a piece of paper. There are infinite ways of, of doing that, you know. And if you take a big pile of clay and you model it, uh, you find out that there are infinite possibilities to model that piece of clay, infinite. So from these billions of possibilities that are there, uh, there are a lot that don't make sense to you. And so, maybe the practice of an artist is to move the material around and keep uh, and be aware of the moments and the forms that have a meaning for oneself, that have uh, either produced an idea or, or an emotion in, in, uh, with oneself. And, and therefore, you know that at the beginning and you know that through the whole process. And in the same way, you just feel this is the right moment to leave it as well. So there's no, it's, it's, it's an emotional criteria probably. People think they associate sculpture with something which is kind of slow or static, you know, from Stas's statue, the idea of nothing, not much changing. But the fact is that in the last hundred years that sculpture has done fantastic, incredible uh, things and 
has become, cha- come from being just about the figure and the anat- anatomy uh, and anatomical representations to being a study of the material world. And in a real sense, put in its essence, sculpture is about how material affects us. And I think that is really important. I think that's, that's, a, that's a political... Dyna- it's, it, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a very, very important point. And I think also that um, sculpture has just begun. I mean, it sounds ridiculous because we all know that you know, human beings have been making sculpture for thousands of years, but which also shows how important sculpture is, that it's been made, always been going on. But it's a rare human activity uh, with a very particular meaning. Um, it's not about utilitarianism. It really shows you what happens to material when it's allowed to, with a free spirit, grow into the space. Uh, and I think uh, that's a very, very important function uh, that it has. And therefore, uh, and I think it will become more important in the future. I, I do believe that.